Joy, welcome to More or Less. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Number one question we ask on this show is, how are you feeling in one word or so, more or less? I'm feeling good. I feel good. It's good's good the common answer. Yeah. What What do you need more of? What do I need more of? Probably more naps and more water, but I have one, so. Okay, water and naps, all, yeah. all caring to your body. You sleep in water, yeah. Yeah, and your mind. What is something you need less of? Probably work. <laughs> i agree yeah right i i agree who yeah. needs work just a little i think it keeps you young you know it keeps your it mind active. Bills. Yeah, that too if you're interested in that sort of thing bill paying uh but <laughs> i think for the most part it also is good for us to like have things that we like and do them but not too much you yeah know? Do you find your work gives you purpose? Yes. But I think I'm sort of one of those like weird birds that I think if I worked at a gas station, which I have fantasized about, um, I would still like find a sense of purpose in it. I just sort of like, uh, I don't know, I'm here, so might as well make a little video game out of it. <laughs> We started off camera. We started about Tamagotchis, but now here we no, like basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what when you were younger? What did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> I'm I'm dying to know this answer. I, me too. Uh, <laughs> I don't really remember. Which is probably why my parents were so worried about me. <laughs> you didn't have an answer? No. Well, it's not that I didn't have an answer. I think it was, it is that, is I think I could have been anything. Like, I feel like one week it would have been like a poet, and then the next week it would have been like a scientist, and then I like <laughs> became a pastor for a little bit, and then am gay. So they're like, uh, and I was like, that's so awful <laughs> and so we like I don't know I think for me I just like life has been this really interesting journey of like I don't know I feel capable enough uh to do the things that I know I can do if that makes sense like I don't think I'm the greatest musician in the world but I do like think that I bring something to the table and like to the conversation of the arts and like, I think I would approach that uh, whether I was, like, fixing clocks or, you know. I really want to drive the Zamboni at an ice <gasps> rink. Me too. Could you imagine you wake up, fire up the Zambo, glide around the ice a little bit? This like, is the most relatable thing that's ever been said on this show because I, I was fascinated when I first saw a Zamboni. It's a beautiful thing. And it's so satisfying. It's so satisfying. Seeing it. It's like vacuuming, but ice? Can you believe? Ugh. What a gig that must be. <laughs> what dream. a job. But you can just like listen to music or podcasts or whatever you want. It involves just... zero social interaction. None. You just get to, to vibe and drive and mm -hmm. I don't know, I think they're onto something that we're, yeah. we're not like onto. The truck drivers of the ice. Yes! <laughs> truck drivers of the ice! That's a good movie title. Someone write that down. That's good. I wrote it down in my heart. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I like that Samboni driver. So obviously you are now a musician. Mm -hmm. um, do you envision future versions of yourself doing something other than music? These days, we can all use more energy, and Mind Plus Beauty's wellness facial oils will give you the energy boost you need. So whether you're heading off to exercise, going for a run, or just having a busy day, simply add the Beauty of Energy oil to your face and experience more gain, less pain. It's the all-natural way to enhance your energy level, and it's made for everyone. Good for your face and good for you. Available with free shipping at mindplusbeauty.com. That's mind, P-L-U-S, beauty.com. Do you envision future versions of yourself doing something other than music? Um, I definitely have interest in other things. Like I was an English major in college and like did like creative writing and thought I was going to be a playwright um, until I was like, there are much better people at this than me. And also it's hard. <laughs> um, and then somehow decided that music was a much easier career to get your foot in the door. Um, but I just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that for me, like, 
music, film, the. I don't think that humanitarianism is like a business. I don't think that you should like make that work. I think that's just something that you could do, but that is a way that I'd like to spend my time, you know, it's just like taking care of other people and not being a loud mouth about it. And like, uh, yeah, I think for me, music is just one way that I like express myself on this planet. And it just so works out that it's currently my job. Um, but I don't know, I don't always feel as tied to it as some of my peers may feel, uh, just because I think that this world is vast and like I'm vast and I would be selling myself short if I were to say like, I can only make records and do tours from now on, you know, it's like, I would love to do that and I love doing it. Um, but also like if someone calls me and like wants to make a musical, then I'm also going to try that, you know, or if someone wants to do a podcast, because apparently I have a podcast voice, you do. Um, then I would do that, you know, just, just, I'm just open. Yeah. yeah. Cause, cause that's, that's really where my question is. 20 30 years from now do you see still see yourself touring do you still see yourself making music commercially i mean sure i'm i have sort of a philosophy of like i don't want to overstay my welcome mm. like i uh, like if you catch me like I don't know, a half a beer deep at a bar because I'm a lightweight. Uh, you, I'll be in the corner talking about bands that I feel like could have quit 20 years ago and like still would have been as great. And um, I think for me, if there feels like there's like a demand and purpose to what I do as a musician, then I'll still do it because I, I think that that is sort of what drives me to it now. But if it feels like I'm just making noise to like feed my ego, then like... I don't know. They're like cheaper, easier, less draining ways on the body yeah. to do that, you know, to be a narcissist. So I think that <laughs> <laughs> give it to a shit. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think for me, it's like I want to do this forever, but I, I don't want to put myself in the position where I feel like I have to um, because I think that's really unhealthy. And I I don't know. Uh, I don't know that any other job goes my dad was a pharmacist and he wasn't like he loved it so much but he wasn't like I want to be cutting up pills until I'm 800 years old like no he's like I'm good yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take a break and do other things obviously you've been doing music for a while do you still enjoy it do you still have fun yeah it's my favorite thing in the world I was telling people in an elevator at Spotify that I like I love playing the guitar um like it just like I at home like it it's just like one of my hobbies like in the same way that I like read or play video games it's like I'll pick up a guitar and just like play music just because it makes me happy and I try to like infuse that into every part of my job that involves it like I feel like if you come to one of my shows it's very much a like joy got like four or five of her stone friends together and taught <laughs> taught them all the songs and then we just like hang out and I just I don't know I think for me I so much of this job is about the love of it because I feel very lucky to be doing it and I know that it's not um especially for someone in a creative field like it's just not guaranteed for me to have any of the things that I have you know even though like uh people like I feel like I, I feel like it's crazy that I've gotten this far and sometimes people talk about like going farther and I'm like I don't know dog it's like nice <laughs> you know and I could like build a healthy stable life for myself and like my community and the people that I love off of you know a career this size and um I don't know I think I just I think about it a lot in terms of the love of it and the passion for it and just infusing that into every part of what I do what I'm sensing is there's fulfillment there and satisfaction and gratitude that you're able to do what you love and and get paid for it yeah 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 because <laughs> right? not a lot of people get to do that you look around it's so rare and it's like I'm not going to lie and say there aren't things about my job that are difficult mm -hmm. like I, like it's a job like and I think people I don't know like because I get to like hang out on couches and just like talk during the day or because I get to like 
play PS5 in a dressing room while I wait to play guitar with my friends. Like, I think it can sometimes seem like it's not a job, uh, but it is work. But it also is, I could, I could be doing more difficult work that doesn't feel as fulfilling to me, you know, or that isn't like the like culmination of what I did when I was a kid, which was like hang out and write songs and, you know, just to send them to my friends to see if it would make them feel better. And so, I don't know, I, uh, it's really cool. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna overreach, uh, but I also don't wanna like dream under what my capacity is. But I, I just like, I don't know, I could, I could really have a, a really hard job and this job is hard, but it also means that I get to do what I love. 70 to 80 percent of the time which is rare how do you define success i am successful because i well i because uh like i am as healthy as i can be and like the ability of my body and i'm i know that i am following the values that i have as like a human and an artist like to the fullness of my abilities and like I don't sell out arenas but I like do like you know I did a tour last year that like was at one size of room and this year it's like it, it's like the sizes have doubled and you know like and for me success is just being able to be true to who you are in like the healthiest way and what you want to do on this planet um and especially in my job, I think it's very easy to think that success is like someone telling me that like my album is good or that my show is fun or that my social media is the best. But all of that is, uh, I don't know, uh, that's not success. That's like making people happy, which is like a fun part of life. Um, but I think success is like living life to like the fullest and most integral and most beautiful that you can for yourself thank you for saying that because <clears throat> i i really relate and um i think that's why i like doing the show and i like talking to people because you don't always hear that every day especially in this industry where everything is caught up with titles and charts and companies and bureaucracy and it's at the end of the day it's what fills your cup and what makes you happy and if you're able to sustain and yeah. um, feel value in, in what you're doing I don't think that necessarily has to mean selling out arenas or hitting 30 billion streams I don't, yeah. I don't think that's I think that can be a goal but I don't I don't know I don't really think it's always success Yeah. to the individual yeah and I think like incremental growth is a sign of health like I'm like a plant nerd like when I'm home I play I play my like garden music in the mornings like <laughs> roll a joint drink some coffee play plantasia to the tomatoes and uh yeah I just like it it's not a bad sign you know if something like quadruples overnight but it's just sort of rare <laughs> Um, and I think that most of what you see in nature is just slow incremental growth. Um, and those plants and things tend to be the most fruitful and healthy. And I'm trying to think of my career in those terms because I don't want to burn out. Like, I just want to be able to enjoy, you know, I'm living the dreams. Like, I, the, uh, like <laughs> I can text the front man of one of my favorite rock bands when I was a kid you know like in that like you know some kid on Twitter might think my music is mid but they can't do that you know and I I try to remember that and and be like that wasn't the case two years ago so what could be possible two or five years from now a year from now yeah, yeah. and it's it's a slow burn right it's yeah. and that's I think the beauty of of being in the industry and watching artists grow from from what I do and my side is being able to to see you at one stage and then see you at a different stage and I mean I've I've been privileged to see you twice this year now at Radio City and Ooh. Irving Plaza I hope you had to, an okay time <laughs> kick-ass time are you kidding it was it was such a warm fuzzy beautiful feeling it was Hell just yeah. cozy and happy and I really appreciated that but um I think it's so special to to watch artists evolve and and grow into their full self how do you feel you've grown 
of course, yes, your career and your artistry has grown in the past year. But how do you how has Joy the Human grown in the past year? Mm. I am like quicker to apologize and admit when I'm wrong. Mm. I think that that is I think that that can be like a, a marker of anxiety. You know, it's not just like a marker of someone being like a jerk. Like, I think that for me, like I would always apologize. But I think it just took me a long time to go, oh, or to just like see it from someone else's perspective. Um, and I think especially like I, I'm working with a lot of people right now and like I can't like wait 48 hours to say sorry, you know? Like I think it's important for someone to know that like, you know, as your band leader or as your friend or as a human, like I messed up, you know? And uh, I think that it doesn't have to be fast, but for me, I learned the value in like, not just like sitting on an apology. Um, I think I am better at asking for what I want. And I think that's part of that is like, when you have to like, I think like now I have like, like cross across like the work I do. I have like, I don't know, like 10, 15 people on my team and like, uh, that's a lot of people to tell things. And so to be clear and to be caring um, is like something that I've grown a lot in because I think, you know, uh, the fear is always like, I don't want to be mean or I don't want to be excessive. And especially as like, you know, a female, female presenting person, like it, it just like is hard to just st sort of stand on what you need. Um, but I definitely like have gotten a lot better at that. Um, and I've gotten really good at guitar. Like, I feel like I've gotten better. Like, I just, uh, it's, my approach to it hasn't changed, but I think I've spent so much time playing now that I can, like, feel the difference. And that makes it fun because I can go, like, okay, what else can I try and what can I grow into? And that's really cool. Um, I think those are things. Those are all incredible. Yeah. And, I mean, congratulations on, huh? on all of that <laughs> um, because not easy <laughs> it's Thanks. not easy to admit when you fucked up and it's not always easy to ask for what you want and I want to ask you a little bit more about that do you find when you're asking things of people or of things or of the universe are you having to be more specific are you having to be more direct in your approach like did you find you were kind of just general about things yeah I think it just it's just the directness, you know. Um, I think that it it's really easy, honestly, to like maybe dance around a thing or like pull punches. Mm. Um, and I think that honestly, sometimes it's like uh, not in a violent way, but just like healthier to go full force and to like say the thing. Um, because I, I think, again, clarity is just, like, really important. Um, and I I don't know. I just, I think that it's really easy for people to not listen to marginalized people. And so I found that the clearer I was, the better and, like, easier things became. And not in an aggressive way, but just in, like, hey, this is what I need or this is what I don't need. Um, and, yeah. Yeah, I think that's... That's really important, especially in an industry that often tries to silence people. Yeah. Uh, you know where I'm going with that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it's it's essential to to use your voice. Otherwise, people will use it for you or they will um, make decisions or, you know, do what they think is right versus you. Yeah. Have you always been sure of your voice in this industry? No, I think it's really foolish to like, or, or not really foolish, but well, actually kind of, yeah. I think if you're a hundred percent confident in anything you're saying, yeah, uh, don't, <laughs> because I just like, we're all everything from like, ugh, I don't know, like uh, get crazy, but like from religion to science, like is our best guess of our best estimation of what we're experiencing here. Um, and so I think for me, it's not about, again, it's like, it's, it's clarity versus certainty. 
like I'm not trying to be certain about like this is the right thing. It's just like this is what I feel is right for this. Clear moment. communication. Yep. Yeah. Um, and if I'm wrong, being able to go, hey, I was wrong. Let's go back and do that other thing, you know, <laughs> or yeah. let's try something different. Um, and I think that that is. I think for me the difference is like I never want to feel like I'm talking from a place of absolute authority like or like absolute wisdom or understanding but just from a place of like this is my understanding of things at the moment and I'm willing to be wrong and I'm also willing to be right but will like I'm willing to go either direction I can imagine the people around you respect you more for that to be able seriously because i think if if someone can kind of grab things by the balls and be like this is what i think and this is what i want and this is what i need like that's that's big yeah we'll see (laughs) yeah i I think it's i think it's big and it's it doesn't i think happen often enough i think there's a lot of especially younger artists um really impressionable and you know unsure and this is a scary terrain um that it can be hard to to find your footing and your voice yeah 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 I actually really get that and relate with that I think the thing I think about a lot is like at like it's my life at the end of the day like my manager or my agent or you know label like they might have an opinion or a strong feeling or like insight or wisdom Mm -hmm. you know about something um but at the end of the day like it it's just like i'm gonna be on my deathbed being like these are the decisions i made and these are the decisions i didn't make and being able to be okay with that even when it's hard or unpopular or when it's you know like i don't know when the perception of it feels uh it feels like you're misunderstood uh i think for me it's like what can i live with you know for the entirety of my life and I think that that makes a difference like both in what I don't do and what I do I think that like that clarity and that like desire just I think it comes through to the people that I work with and like because it also like it comes through in gratitude and it comes through in like I don't want to hire 25 people if I can't take care of them Mm -hmm. like I'd rather have like half as much in a smaller vehicle knowing that like the band and I can have sandwiches than like you know have people stressing out about like how they're gonna get food or water or whatever they need in like a gig that's already like tough you know yeah yeah do you feel like your health needs to be scheduled into your day our morning coffee our supplements our skincare we're limited on the products that help us maintain a balanced lifestyle in an easy healthy and convenient way So our friends at Neuro Functional Gum and Mints did exactly that with their nootropic blends that enhance your health and wellness into something intrinsically convenient, affordable, and portable. We at More or Less have loved these energy and focus mints with a patented formula of B vitamins, L-theanine, and natural caffeine to give us the energy and mental endurance necessary to stay focused and energized without the crash or jitters. I've been hyping up Neuro for quite some time, so I'm super excited to partner with them for another season of More or Less. If you'd like Neuro by your side too, use the link in our description and use code more or less for 10% off your first purchase of Neuro Gum and Mints. So speaking of of decisions as well, <laughs> your decision not to be a pastor or the or the church's decision. <laughs> hard segue into into religion there. <clears throat> okay, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Only because I do think religion plays a heavy role on on mental health and the way we um, experience spirituality and and methodology methodology around religion growing up i assume from what i've read you were pretty involved in the church and then that shifted over time what's your your current relationship with religion yeah um i sort of let myself be as like religious or not religious as i need to in a 24 hour period Mm. like I just take it day by day like when I lose stuff sometimes like I'm not even Catholic but someone taught me that if you ask Saint Anthony where it is you'll find it and it like works all the time I'm like Saint Anthony where's my vape (laughs) (laughs) where's my apple watch (laughs) yeah basically um and like I just like I don't know I think uh if I were to cut myself off entirely um, f- 
from something that was so formative to me in both positive and negative ways like I think that that could be bad um but I don't want to like be at like the table of an institution that like isn't willing to evolve like begging for scraps Mm. like I think that there's like a tension of like it's not a no but it's not a yes either it's just sort of like this is my background and this is how it shapes the way that I like talk about things and view the world and treat people but it's not um yeah it's not uh like if i were to fill out a survey i'm not going to check the check christian box, box. Yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah. just like a it's sort of like i grew up in a household where my parents like called us into the room to pray you know before bed every night and so like that changes a person and i i think that i accept that about myself instead of pretending like it didn't happen so I going back to to religion, I'm curious if people around you have expressed this because I feel like I've I've been talking to more people that are religious or, you know, believe in God and have a belief system, but want to be as far removed as possible from any institution or specific um, yeah. church. Have have people in your life also been on that train? Yeah, I think I have a really interesting mixed bag of honestly that was part of the reason why I like left the church structure as I knew it was like you t- the talk was about like meeting or like accepting all different types of people but I was like hanging out with the same type of person mm. all the time um and so yeah I think it it's nice to like live in a world where there are some people who are like I can't like even think or talk about church or religion or synagogue like just whatever their like their particular religious trauma is and then I have other friends that are still Christian and other friends that are somewhere in between and um yeah I think it's it's nice it's nice and I totally understand wanting to just like never think about it again and I think that that is a fair path I just think for me I like say a lot about my job as a songwriter that I feel like a researcher on the human condition like I literally just like feel my feelings every day and then write them down um (laughs) and so I think that thinking about like what if life is not like what we can just see or understand is part of that at least for what it means for me to be an artist and so that's why that's where my openness comes from but I like I don't really think it needs to be everybody's bag yeah yeah and I think it you know it's space just like sexuality it's a spectrum that can evolve and you know it ebbs and flows and I think we're moving away from society of being black and white thinking of this rigidity like yeah. things come and go and um you know as you evolve as a person your relationship with church changes your relationship with others change it's all it's all kind of open-ended you know yeah. yeah so talk to me about proof of life deluxe <laughs> <laughs> i have to get the promo in there I gotta, oh, yeah. I gotta squeeze promo. that in gotta do it gotta <laughs> do it yeah i have a deluxe album coming out um I uh, wrote it during my ample free time on the road this year. <laughs> but did you really have an ample free time? I did not. But I also, uh, back to the conversation about loving what I do, like writing is still such a huge part of how I process things. And so there's a few songs on there. Some of them, like if you bought like a, a vinyl record of my album, like they were on, they were like bonus tracks. And then there's three that are sort of new. Um, and, uh, yeah, they were all just sort of songs that came up as I was going through things this year and I recorded them and would text them to people that I met or like I was on tour with Noah and his keys player is this amazing player named Dylan Jones and every night I would listen to Dylan play and be like I need I need Dylan to play something and so I did a new version of Sweet Symphony where Dylan's playing the piano and it's like super beautiful. And um, yeah, I just, Proof of Life is one of my favorite things I've ever been a part of. And it's cool that it's my record and I wanted to expand it by writing some sad songs about death and my dog and, you know, being wild enough to chase my dreams. And I think it sort of adds this nice extra note to is already a really cool record yeah that's so incredible 
Um, you mentioned touring with Noah as well. What was it like? Because we talk about this so much on the show, and I'm just dying to know your experience because I've seen your tweets, I've seen your posts. Joy, what is it like going from <laughs> opener to headliner? Because you did both this year. I did both this year, and I do. Uh, that's sort of my like work pattern right now. I don't know okay. that it'll always be the same, but I try to do like support headline, support yep, yep. headline. Um, this year was a journey, and I, uh, oh, I don't want to get uh, me looking for the exits. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is your time. This is my, this is my time. I love my your friend. Your story. Uh, I love Noah, and I'm like, I'm really happy for what is happening uh, for him. You know, um, it wasn't always easy being me in some of those spaces, but I'm also like not a white guy. You know. And uh, I think that that is like other people's work to do. And it was just my job to like play my show. And like by the time, like I, I was covering Rocket Man. So by the time I covered Rocket Man, mm -hmm. the white guys were like, oh, bro, I get it. Um, <laughs> but like it was tough uh, at some points. But like I love Noah and I love his crew and I love his band. And it was like, it was a really fun road that. By the time I got to my headline tour, I was like, this is like the perfect, it was like the perfect amount of time. It was the perfect moment in time. And then just seeing like the fruit of maybe some of those like difficult days, like headlining honestly across this whole, or supporting all across this whole year to be reflected back to me on my headline tour. Like, I don't know, seeing people in John Mayer shirts and stick season shirts and, you know, my morning jacket gear and like, mm -hmm just like really being like, okay, it was worth the hard days or worth the crowds that didn't always understand who I was or what I was trying to do. And uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you for, for your honesty on that. Thanks. <laughs> Cause Someone might come from the rafters and take listen, me out. <laughs> it's your truth, it's your, it's your story and it's yeah. your lived experience. And I think it's not, I can only imagine how difficult it is A, to be an opener, but B, to be in an open, be an opener in spaces where you may not feel as loved or accepted um so i think you know if you could reach one person in those rooms which i'm sure you did yeah and they came back for headline shows i know i'm one of them um but i've also been a fan of you for years <laughs> uh, but i just i i think you just give off such positive grateful energy and i think it's okay to acknowledge Thanks. that sometimes things are shitty yeah no it was shitty and i like i was like honest to the people i needed to be honest right. to about what was shitty about it i think people don't always think about what it's like to be someone like me in this body and being a touring professional and that became very clear after this year uh and i feel really lucky because the crews like like the like Noah's team is amazing like and John Mayer's team was amazing my morning jackets team was amazing like all everybody's team took care of me mm -hmm. uh but it, the the fans could be a mixed bag right, and that's right. my job is just to play the songs and to like re, like to sort of be like this is why I got invited and why he didn't call you redditor 8992 <laughs> um uh and and just stand in that but it it wasn't always easy but I like I feel lucky that I did it with people that I like because that it just makes the difference. Were you getting like, were you getting hate on social media or were, were was there just not nice feedback from fans like online? It depended on the day. Okay. And this is the entire year. And this is my life, right? I don't know if you remember, but John Mayer and Taylor Swift dated. And that's my problem. You don't say. <laughs> did you know that I'm directly involved in a relationship that they were in over a decade ago? Uh, and like, here's what's true. Uh, when I, uh, people who like know me, uh, know that I wouldn't have taken that tour without asking questions. Um, I think that for me, I just like genuinely hardcore believe that you are not like, you're not what you do, like, or the mistakes you make, you are who you decide to be after you make them. And so for me, like going on the road was not like about like things that were said in an interview like decades ago mm -hmm. um, and apologized for like this was like, who are you now and why are you uh, out of, you know, one of 
like, I don't know, three <laughs> arena filling acts who's asking to take a black queer person on the road. And, and so for me, like when I got those like answers and like felt safe and felt like I wasn't going to be in a weird place, uh, I said, yes. And, uh, people were like commenting like stuff and like, <laughs> just like, you know, people were upset and like, I spoke to the people who had valid concerns, but like, I'm not gonna, I'm not like, don't uh, leave me out of your opinions mm. on Speak Now TV. <clears throat> because respectfully, if you wanna have a conversation about how many black queer people that Taylor Swift has brought on tour, then I don't know, dox my grandma stands, but like, it's not that many. And I, uh, I think for me, there's sometimes, uh, you know, an expectation that I always do what everybody wants, especially as like a black queer person who like isn't like, I make art in all sorts of circles. Like I have a song with Maxo Cream and Chris Stapleton, you know? Um, so it's like, uh, I just, uh, for me, it has always been about following who people are, following what, like following where the actual like love and care is. and. Uh, so yeah, getting a, get, getting flack for touring with John Mayer sucked, and then honestly, uh, I uh, they announced the Noah dates before I like uh, like bef before they announced me. So mm. most people who bought a ticket didn't really know that gotcha. I was on the bill, and it, that's sort of rare, but that's like it happens. Um, and so I think part of what I was just fighting through was like, oh, people, oh, it's like seven o'clock and people thought Noah was coming on, but here I am. <laughs> Supplies. Uh, but I like, it's, it's fine. That's what it is being an opener and not everybody can read. So like, <laughs> I like. But also like, it's very rare to go to a show and there's not an opener. I but said what I digress. said about literacy. And <laughs> <so>. <laughs> I like, for me, it wasn't about like, oh, I, I get it. I really do get it. And so I wasn't trying to be apologetic. I was just trying to take people on a journey of like, if you have to listen to somebody, I'm at least going to take care of you. Um, and so that energy was tough. And then sometimes, you know, some states, they were like, I just really don't want to listen to this type of person right now. Uh, and that's chill, you know, like but and i get paid either way you know so i'm <laughs> yep. not really sweating it uh but it is like a hard emotional energy and for me it was like learning to like take care of the band and then find people in the room that are absolutely like into what you do you know and yeah i it's it yeah it's uh, everybody has hard gigs like i'm not like i'm not trying to say that like I'm the only person who's walked into a room as an opener and not felt the love uh but I think it was one of those complex situations where I was like okay like I just gotta like I just gotta go and I know people expected one thing and I'm something different but like like I don't know my friend invited me to open these shows so I'm gonna do it because that means I get to spend two months with my friend <laughs> I still I will stand by I think you were the perfect choice for that tour Thanks. i think obviously you have a friendship with him but i just think your music his music like there's just so much um no pun intended joy in it Dude. and i i just felt like it was a perfect a perfect match um i didn't even know about all that john mayer bullshit but the swifties once again strike Strike hard. Listen, Antihero is the Fast and Furious 10 of songs, meaning it's my favorite song I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> and you heard it here yeah. first. So it's like, I don't like, it, for me, I think uh, <laughs> fandom has always been about nuance, but mm -hmm. we're in like a different time. Um, and I'm like, I don't want to defend people who have done horrible things. Like that's not my gig. Uh, but I also want to investigate like maybe things that we hear about about people versus what is true, right. especially like having actual proximity. Yep. Um, and so that's been interesting. Yeah, we, that's a whole other episode. But like we've talked we've talked a little bit on this show about like the parasocial relationships with artists and, and that dynamic and how tricky it can get. Yeah. Um, but I just want to say I'm, I'm sorry I can go through that. But all in all. I 
I think the world of you. I was saying on the Thanks. way here, I was nervous about this interview because I deeply respect you so much. Oh my gosh. And this is fun. I just <laughs> think you're such a badass and I really appreciate your time. Um, I want to close on one final question, which is what is one thing you've done this week, today, uh, to take care of your mental health? That's a great question. A little check-in. I... <laughs> I'm slightly nervous as to what's the craziest gonna answer you ever. <laughs> I'm slightly nervous. <laughs> Every few months, I find a new YouTube obsession, like a new like video obsession, and uh, there's this guy that marinates steaks in all different types of stuff. <laughs> Expand. Uh, so, like the episode that I watched just recently, uh, today on the plane uh he reverse like seared i think he called it in uh ketchup mayo and mustard so one steak and ketchup one steak and mayo one steak and mustard put it in the oven until it reached an internal temperature of 125 degrees and then took it out and then seared it on the grill and then he like feeds it to his friends and they sort of guess what the experiment was. And he's done like squid ink, he's done Sprite, he's done pineapple juice. Like it just like, basically you can write in the comments like dunk a steak and I don't know, not paint thinner, but you get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Running out of liquids, Mountain Dew. Dunk a steak in Mountain Dew and then he'll, he'll, he'll do it. And so that, uh, it really, it really just absolutely turns my brain into a smash burger for like 15 minutes <laughs> and I have no problems like I'm just I'm just thinking about meat <laughs> that was not the answer I was expecting at all but I really need to know how did you find this man where did you come across this I couldn't tell you w Jess <laughs> did, did a friend did it come up on your recommended I think it was a recommended thing, which is interesting because I mostly just watch teenagers who smoke weed. But the I, algorithm is algorithming. The algorithm was like, now that you're stoned. Well, no, actually, <laughs> I know exactly how it happened because my second to last YouTube obsession was a uh, watching Gordon Nightmare or Gordon <laughs> Gordon Ramsay go into kitchens and be like, oh my god, it's raw. How many weeks have these clams been in here? Like that type of stuff. And so I think it went, <laughs> this person must really like food Cooking. related clips. <laughs> it, it, okay, the dots are connecting there. That I can understand why this, yeah. this would have been pushed your way. It's really incredible. I highly suggest it to everybody. I hope when Steaks. we post this video that somehow YouTube senses that you spoke about it and this video pops up next to this. <laughs> So everyone can just easily go click yeah. and be like, I want more of what Joy's having. It really is something. It's it's nice. It really, I for 15 minutes, I really don't think Mindless about Mindless entertainment. Yeah. That's, that's what the world needs more of. But it's also like, then like in the middle of tour, I made my band steaks because I had been watching so many steak videos. Marinated in what though? I didn't mar- well- I did a dry rub. I did a salt, or oh. not a dry rub, a salt brine. Like, so I put salt on it. And <laughs> I learned this from the videos. Uh, the liquid comes out and then it leaches back in if you like let it sit for yeah. long enough in the fridge. So I did that. And then I, I bought a grill from Walmart and I grilled some steaks. Like one of the, like it was literally like a tiny- Like a small little- Tabletop charcoal grill. I know exactly what you're talking about. The little, <laughs> yep, the mini yeah, it's ones. It's called like a little smoker. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Joy, on that note, I'm glad I'm glad you found a way to to reset your brain. Um, <laughs> thank you for coming by, more or less. I appreciate and adore you so much, and this was so fun. Thank this you. Was super fun. <laughs>